to override the default configuration of the data JPA test, which spins up an in-memory embedded database for us, which might not fit to every use case, especially those use cases where we use proprietary features of a database. We now have to override this, and there are multiple ways to achieve this, but the most simplest one is to use the auto configure test database annotation and then here say replace and within this replace we can say none so we don't want to replace any existing configuration by this at data jpa test annotation which would by default if we take a look at the other one auto configure this would then create an auto configured embedded database for us so we don't want any replacement taking place here so then we can also get rid of the h2 database inside our project and then only postgres is part of it and if we then try to re-execute our test the test is still failing because now we have a new problem so we see there wasn't actually any flyway error at all yet but we weren't able to obtain a database connection so we were trying to connect to localhost with here the default port of postgresql because inside our application configuration we have here a really basic configuration where we want to connect to postgres on its default port and then the spring boot database so as there is actually no database running locally yet this test fails and we somehow need a solution to spin up a postgres database for our test case and for this purpose we will use test containers so i've already included the required dependencies for test containers to this sample project so first here the junit jupyter dependency for using the junit jupyter extension of test containers later on which will take care of starting and stopping the containers for us because what test containers will do for us it will start and stop local docker containers where we can then spawn our infrastructure components on demand for our tests and in this example we are also using an already predefined module of test containers which is postgresql so with this module we can then start a local postgres database so we can then even override some default configuration also provide the username and password in the default database and we'll then make sure that we have a database started prior to executing our test which will then also be stopped after our test finishes both either the test succeeds or even if it fails test containers will then make sure to stop the database to not have any orphaned uh, containers running locally so let's take a look how we can now integrate test containers for our data jpa test so for this there are multiple ways we will start with the first one using the junit jupyter extension so therefore we have to annotate our test with a test containers if we take a look at the annotation we'll see here it's like a meta annotation which will do basically this it will extend our current j on a jupyter test with this test containers extension and this extension in the background among other things will take care to start and stop any container definition so what we need now is our container definition so therefore use the add container annotation from test containers then define a static field and here we can now use this postgresql container because we included the module from test containers here let's call it database and then instantiate this container let's provide also the docker image name because we want to be really specific on which postgres version we are testing our application so here we are using postgres 12 then we can also already provide the database name which is now spring boot then we have to provide the password so this will then configure the access to postgres so then we can log in now also here with the username spring boot with password spring boot and also database name spring boot this is good enough for our tests and now with this at container annotation test container the test containers extension will see this and then will make sure to start a local postgres database for us what's left is to actually override some settings for our application so as test containers will start this database or map the database port from postgres to a random ephemeral port on our machine we can't actually hard code here the port 
because this will change from test to test and we now need a solution to dynamically override our JDBC data source URL with the correct port of our started PostgreSQL container. And therefore we can make use of a spring test feature, which is called dynamic property source. With this dynamic property source, we can dynamically override or provide different configurations for our application prior to starting the actual application context. So therefore let's inject here the property registry. Let's call this like set data source properties. And with this registry, we can now add or also override existing properties of our Spring Boot application. So the first thing we want to override is the data source.url. And to now get the data source URL, this database container already provides a convenient method to get the JDBC URL. So we don't have to construct or concatenate anything on our own as this is already wrapped inside this method here. So it will properly construct JDBC URL and also with this get map port. And this is here the important dynamic part as we all started off on a random port, which we don't know prior to starting the test. We could now also override the password on username, but as we are using the default with already part of our default configuration profile, we can leave it here as is. But if you would change here the password or username, you can simply add multiple configuration parameters here to override and tweak your settings. So now let's see if our application is able to start. You will now see here prior to starting our application, you will see, so this is now quite fast. So if you execute it for the first time, for sure test containers have to, has to download the Docker image for you. But as I already downloaded this Postgres 12 image is quite fast. And then here you see some output of test containers. It will make sure to start Postgres. So here you can see the default output when you start Postgres on your machine. And then once this container is up and running. So it also does a check if the actual container is available for requests. So it's not enough to just start the container. We also have to make sure the internal database is started properly and our application can connect to. So once this is done, you will see here our Spring Boot application being started. And if we then scroll here a little bit to the right, we can also see to which database we are connecting. And now you see here exactly this random ephemeral port. So something 32,000, which we couldn't guess prior to testing because this is random. Then we see here Flyway is creating first because it's an empty database. Uh, this Flyway schema history table, which it internally uses to keep track of any already applied migration to the database. And then as we already have one migration script, it executes this migration script and here we see it could successfully apply one migration to our database and then we see here our context started in almost three seconds so as we're having here a sliced application context this context should also start quite fast compared to starting the whole spring context and now we're made sure that we are able to override the default configuration of the data jpa test we could replace the default behavior of using an embedded database with a database of our own. And therefore we use test containers to start a local Postgres database for us and then overrode the JDBC URL to point to this temporary Postgres container that was started for us. And then our whole application context is able to start. We are able to migrate any schema scripts with Flyway and are now ready to actually test our native query.